welcome everybody to our very first recreation advisory committee of the new term. It's exciting to be here with a new group, and it's also exciting to be here um, in person because we have been holding these meetings virtually for the past over two years now. So this is nice to have everybody together in this room. So I'm just going to call the meeting to order at seven seven o'clock p.m. And I'm just going to read the statement out. Please note the meeting is video and audio recorded, and all electronic meetings are uploaded to the municipality's YouTube page. By registering to participate in the meeting by electronic means, you are consenting to have your likeness and comments recorded and posted on YouTube. So next, we're just going to do roll call. And normally, when we do roll call, we just go around and announce everybody's name and you say present. But since today is our first meeting, and we may not all know who each other is. I was hoping that maybe we could. Everybody knows who everybody is. If that's okay, maybe I'll just start on your end. Sure. Uh, my name is Joanna Jefferson. I have, I was born and raised in Muslims. Um, I went to the University of Guelph and uh, just recently moved back to the Muslims area in 2020 with my husband. We live in Morriston. I currently sit on the board of the Optimist Public Muslims, and I'm really excited to be a part of this panel. Okay. I'm Stephanie McPearl. I've been in the township for 20 plus years. Um, I've sat on several committees and um, been the chair of a few organizations in the city of Guelph, not in Plislich. I've never been involved in a lot in Plislich other than playing fastball many, many years ago. Um, and I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully I can contribute. Okay, uh, Vinny Klimko's, uh, obviously born and raised in Plislich. Been here since 1983. So if you do the math, it's sneaking up there. Uh, been around for a long time. I'm on the Aberfoyle Fair, uh, Badenau Community Center, uh, with the Chopinus Club. Uh, do a lot of stuff in the community, uh, a lot of stuff around the community. So you've probably seen me around. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the next four years are going to be big with uh, a lot of work going on at the property here, the main grounds with the uh, Equipment getting upgraded, so it's a very important time, I feel, to be on the committee for the next four years. And I look forward to, uh, you know, keeping a neutral tone and doing what we can do. Hey, I'm Mary Christinas, and uh, I moved to Puss Lynch about 10, 11 years ago, and we uh, started our family here. So I'm from Toronto originally. I did schooling in the U.S. and uh, worked a little bit with uh, the Secondary Teachers Federation and then um, also with the Lynch Softball, and I helped to set up their web page and do their web development, uh, as well as registration, that sort of thing. Um, recently, we've had some dealings with the park in our community, and so I've been very involved in that. And it sort of was a natural progression to have interest in working with the Red Committee. Um, so I look forward to working with everyone, doing as much as we can to help the community. Great. Um, I'll introduce myself too. I'm Jessica Goida. I'm a member of the council for the Council of Pleasant. Um, I also have been living here since, um, since I was a kid. So it sounds like there's a lot of years of residency here on the, in the committee, but um, I really um, am looking forward to, to having this rec committee for the next four years. As Vinny said, there's a lot happening. I think it's a crucial time. And um, I really think that the recreational programs and facilities really help foster a real sense of community. And that's really what, uh, why I ran for council and why I want to be part of this committee. So I'm really looking forward to it as well. Um, and I would also like to introduce our Deputy Clerk for the Township. Uh, so I'll be providing some community coordination for tonight. Uh, we are actually in the progress of recruiting a communication committee coordinator who will be taking over uh, the uh, committee coordinator role. Uh, and then I'll be moving on to providing procedural advice for that person uh, in attending this meeting. 
Um, so I'm just going to move that down there. And then today we've got Courtney with us. I'm Courtney Lloyd Fox. I'm the municipal clerk with the township. Um, and I probably won't be here with you every meeting. So you're going to see that ship that just Steve talked about. Um, so staff uh, will attend, I'll attend as needed, but it will be just seen and another representative is really here to support you on a regular basis. Okay, and then I think joining us virtually is uh, Mike Fowler and Sarah Heather. Mike, can, can you just introduce yourself? Are you willing to put your screen on for a sec? <laughs> Sorry, Jessica, can you repeat that? My internet is freezing on me. Just wanted you to introduce yourself and maybe show your face. Oh no, I'm Batman, I don't show my face. <laughs> uh, I'm Mike Fowler, uh, Director of Public Works, Parks and Facilities. I'll be the individual who will have answers for you in regards to timing, uh, progression of projects, et cetera, things like that. So uh, I look forward to contributing to the committee as needed. Mike and Sarah, are you there? Yes, I am here. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so I'm Sarah Heater. I'm the Taxation and Customer Service Supervisor. I'm here to assist with any types of questions um, in terms of revenue and any type of customer service questions in terms of um, rental requests and anything to do with the facilities. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's everybody. We missed. Okay. okay. So then, so now we're going to move on to the moment of reflection, and this is just a moment of silence where we can um, reflect on things that are important to you, issues that are happening in the community and the world. So it's just a, a moment of silence, and we will start that now. Okay, and that concludes our moment of silence. Um, okay, so next we're gonna move on to confirmation of the agenda. Um, so I think everyone's had a chance to look at the agenda, read it through. Um, so this is just the part where we would acknowledge that we're all okay with, with what's on the agenda. And it would also be the moment to add any items if we wanted to, likely not today, but if, in any meeting, if we wanted to add something to the agenda, we could leave it to the park. Um, and so this one, we could be able to the resolution. That the Recreation Advisory Committee approves the February 21st, 2023 agenda as circulated. Okay, did I get someone to move that? Any? And then second okay. Can I get a vote? All, all in favor? Here we go. Okay, so next we are going to do disclosure of conflict of interest. And uh, I guess just from a high level, we haven't. Um, we really haven't done any training on conflict of interest yet, and we will do some. I don't know if Courtney, you want to speak to that for a minute? Yeah. Um, so, uh, a conflict of interest uh, that you might have to declare sitting on this committee um, could be pecuniary in nature. So, again, uh, to do with financial loss or gain um, to yourself directly or indirectly, family members, things like that. Um, so that's one aspect of a conflict that you might need to declare. Another would be in relation to our township code of conduct. Um, this are, these are conflicts that aren't necessarily financial in nature, but they could be a conflict um, uh, if you do have uh, family, friends, or involvement in any of the things that we are here to discuss. And so you just want to take a look at those. And we do have uh, resources that you can reach out to if you need some clarification on that. So uh, just uh, for today, are there any disclosures of conflict of interest from anyone? No? Um, okay. Um, okay, so the next would be delegations. There aren't any today, but if we did have a presentation uh, from the public, like a general presentation or a, um, a specific presentation, this is where that would happen. We don't have any today, so we can 
we can we don't have to do anything right we can pop up yet. Okay, and then I think we're going to jump instead of going through the consent, we're gonna just jump to the committee reports because that starts with us to the two training sets. So we'll stick to um, report eight point one. Uh, the committee orientation training, and I yeah, I can just give a quick overview. Um, so the purpose of this report is for information to provide the committee with a training session of the Township Procedural Bylaw and a training session of the Recreation Committee Centers of Reference. And our input report input box will be provided for this presentation. <clears throat> Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so this is just a brief training on our procedural bylaw. I believe it was included in your agenda package. Um, so we have a procedural bylaw that um, council has approved and it governs the meeting protocols for council and committee. Um, so we have a number of slides here. Again, this should only be about 10 minutes. Um, it's not to say that this is the only time that you could have questions or have discussions on the procedural bylaw. Staff are here to offer that support on a regular basis through email or at the meeting. Um, but this is just to hopefully give you um, a little bit of context about what this uh, document is and how it guides our proceedings at the committee. Or, I'm sorry, quick question. Yes. If, as you're going through this, uh, we have questions, do you want us to wait to the end to ask questions, or would you like us to ask them through? I think if you're okay with it, we can stop as we go. Okay. Is easier. everyone okay with that? <laughs> if anyone has a question, just say. Just... Right. Um, so our first slide here is um, just about the agenda for the training. And again, um, it's looking to be about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to go through the bylaw, um, our advisory committee. So we have advisory, we have quasi-judicial, um, the roles and responsibilities of um, citizen appointees, our council representatives, the chair, and the committee secretary. So our meeting procedure. Um, so we have our meetings that are scheduled for this committee on a quarterly basis, so four times per year. Um, the agendas will be circulated one week in advance of the meeting. Um, we do that so you guys have enough time to take a look at the content or if you have anything um, that you need a question on, asked on. Um, our committee uh, coordinator also sends out an email if you have anything you'd like to add. So usually in advance, if the meeting's going out, Anything in particular you'd like to add to it, that's a good opportunity to do it. Um, what you'd see on the agenda, and our chair has gone through that a little bit um, already, uh, delegations or presentations. Uh, so those could be from the public, it could be from staff, um, or it could be from another committee. So um, we have established our youth advisory committee this year. So just looking ahead at some of the things they may discuss, it may be appropriate for them to come and speak to you or vice versa for you to come and speak to them. So I think we do think there would be an opportunity for some collaboration between those committees. So you would see that likely as a delegation on the agenda. Um, so we have recommendations that come up. Uh, those usually are within the staff report. Um, if we need some direction from the committee, we'll write that right in the report. So it's clear this is what we're going to be you guys at the meeting. Um, those go to council. Again, we're an advisory committee. So this committee itself doesn't necessarily um, make the decisions, but we advise council on um, what the community would want in terms of recreation and pass that along in an advisory capacity. Um, so it, our meetings will include debate and discussion. Um, there's such thing as positive conflict. I think that's a good thing. Um, oftentimes it can result in a good outcome. So this is definitely the forum for that sort of uh, respectful debate and discussion and then uh, voting. So uh, almost every item on the agenda will be discussed as a member and seconder and it will result in a vote. And then we have our minutes. So our committee coordinator, uh, which Justine is filling in for to the up this week has filled, they'll be responsible for taking minutes and then they, those will be included in your next agenda package for your review. So our procedural bylaw, <clears throat> it establishes a procedure for council and committee meetings. So that's the purpose of it. 
It ensures the meetings are held in an open and accessible manner. So we've kind of already talked about our um, meeting platform here today. We are on Zoom, we're live. Uh, it'll go up on our website on YouTube once it's recorded. Um, and then we also offer in person. So our meetings, I think, are more accessible than they've ever been. Uh, lots of different ways that the public can participate um, and take part in what we do. Um, and it provides the opportunity again for the public to participate through delegation. So just to review, um, we have advisory committees and quasi judicial committees. Um, so we'll get into a little bit about what those are. <laughs> So our reporting structure, um, we have council, which is our decision maker, the elected body. Um, we have our committee of adjustment, which is a quasi judicial committee. So again, um, where I had spoken about that advisory committees are not in a position to make decisions, our quasi judicial committees are. Um, so they remain in an arm's length council um, and they make decisions um, on behalf of the township. So our committee of adjustment would um, be on planning matters, specifically minor variances. Um, property standards appeal committee is also a quasi judicial committee that's our uh, planning and development or, or committee of adjustment sorry that acts with that again they're making decisions on behalf of the team to their respective property standards appeal and then along the bottom here you see your advisory committees so we have four we have heritage uh, which is our statutory committee because we have a heritage register we have planning and development advisory they talk to council about a number of planning um, matters including zoning amendments um, or uh, planning matters that happen in our uh, certain zone in the township. We have our recreation advisory committee, which is us, and then our youth advisory committee, which is Randy this year. We have 11 members, which is great. We've had a great turnout. So our committee role. So the role is to provide advice and recommendations to council and to staff. Um, it's to develop and implement goals and objectives, which um, our deputy clerk will get into more a little bit later. And we're governed by our terms of reference, which uh, we'll have a very brief presentation on as well. So duties and conduct. Um, so uh, advisory committees are composed of one council member and our citizen appointees. So in essence, you're volunteers. Um, you're appointed based on the subject matter and of the knowledge and expertise that you have. Um, you're a voting member on the committee. Um, you're, the expectation is to participate fully in debate and discussion. Um, disclose any conflicts of interest, and um, again, uh, we have a, a communication policy that uh, discusses who you speak to media, uh, and so those are specific so people within the organization, um, which does not include uh, committee members. So that's just really the the duties um, and conduct of a citizen appointee. Our chair. Um, which is our appointed council member representative. Uh, the chair's job is to provide leadership, facilitate the meeting procedure. Um, they're the committee liaison with township staff, but again, that doesn't mean that committee members can't reach out to staff. Absolutely can for clarification, anything like that. Um, and again, the chair is also responsible to disclose any conflicts. So council representatives, um, again, this is who we're providing advice to. So there are elected member of council. They're um, on this committee appointed by council. So that was a process that we went through it late last year, maybe early this year to appoint our council representatives to our committees. Um, again, they're a voting member. They also must disclose conflicts of interest. Um, and there's a link between the advisory committee and council. Our committee secretary. Um, so again, uh, Justine will be moving on uh, to more of a procedural role. Um, and so that new person will be joining us at your next meeting. Um, they're a non-voting participant. Likewise, is, uh, our deputy clerk, they prepare the agendas and minutes. They provide in-meeting procedural advice. They present um, reports and recommendations. Um, they record the disclosures if there are any conflicts um, and they just act as a general resource to the committee, they're your point of contact. So um, that person, if you have any questions, will reach out to them. The meeting procedure. So again, um, it's open to the public. We don't have in-camera sessions on our advisory committees. Um, the, there may be an opportunity to do training that perhaps when we would do it, but in general, we don't. Um, we will have subcommittees. Uh, this was a really great addition to our kind of committee structure in the past. It allowed subcommittees to go out and do work on projects. Um, that's important because our committee um, cannot uh, exceed quorum. So for us, quorum would be three. 
with five committee uh, memberships. So you, you break out into these smaller groups, these smaller subcommittees, and allows you to do work outside of the um, and right now we're being held at the community center. So hopefully at some point we can make a change, but right now this is going to be the main place for, for us. Okay, so our agenda, um, it's a legislative requirement that we provide notice and we provide notice to the public in the form of our agenda being posted. Um, it's one week before the meeting, um, available for your review, for the public's review. Um, we circulate it electronically. If you do need a paper copy and you'd like us to bring one, please just let us know, but otherwise it will be all electronic. Um, and the agenda, as you've noted, it includes a list of um, items that we're going to be discussing. So again, this is just uh, how you would work through an item on an agenda. Um, you would have it presented, um, whatever that looks like, it's staff reported delegation. You would have some questions, from recommendation which is often included in the report or it could be a motion moved by a member of the committee you'll have your debate and discussion in the building. so your delegations and presentations um so delegations are 10 minutes in length uh the chair again is responsible to facilitate the meeting um if there's opportunities where somebody would like to vary from a procedural bylaw the chair would move a motion or have someone move a motion and vote on it for example if they wanted to let a delegation go longer or or uh, vary from our procedural bylaw in any way um so it would be the public um, they'd introduce themselves and then the way a delegation um would go is they would present their information to the committee um, the committee can ask a clarification question of the delegate, but essentially you want the delegate to um, finish the delegation and leave, and then the committee enters into debate. You don't enter into debate with the delegate. Okay, so they're there to give you the information, and then the committee is to discuss the information once the delegation is left. Um, so that's a little bit, and it helps us keep on our 10 minutes. Oftentimes, if it goes back and forth with the delegate, it, it loses its um, it's meant to have the discussion among the committee members, not necessarily with the member. So again, this is just talking about that a little bit. Um, so the chair's job is to facilitate um, the question and answer period with the delegate and just keep the relevant the topic uh, relevant and on track and not interesting to debate. So recommendations, um, again, uh, any motion that's moved has to be uh, moved and seconded. Um, the chair does not make a uh, motion, so it would be the members that can do that. Um, the secretary can help you in the wording. Um, they can look at the report and help you with that. Oftentimes, we'll place it on the screen so the committee and the public can see what we're talking about. Sometimes it's hard to track if it's just a verbal conversation, so that can often be helpful. Um, and again, just mentioning that uh, the chair is not in a position to move for second motion. So this is debate and discussion just amongst committee members. So the chair again facilitates this. Um, everyone has an equal opportunity. All members are entitled to uh, take part. Again, that's uh, somebody who just started conflict and then they move on. Um, and just remembering to keep the to keep the discussion relevant to uh, the motion that's on. And voting. Um, so every member has one vote. It's a vote by show of hands, unless the chair uh, would like something different. Um, if it ties, um, it fails. So you would potentially be a tie if we had a member declare if you were down to four members. Um, chair and all members have a right to vote. And again, refusing to vote is a negative. Um, and then the chair will announce whether it's carried or lost for the record. So minutes, um, parliamentary style. So um, what you'll see in our minutes is uh, just specific action. We don't document discussion. We don't document anything other than what has been um, voted on. Um, so again, that's helpful why we have a video record if you want to go back and see the context. Um, so again, uh, we don't we don't put any note or comment in the minutes. It's strictly what the direction is coming from the committee. Um, and it's electronically distributed to members following the meeting, and that's in draft form until it's approved by your group, and it's available on the township's website. Conflict of interest, uh, this is the last slide, and then we're in questions, but this is an important one and one that we're going to receive um, a lot more training on, a lot more formal training from our integrity commissioner, who is our resource if you need 
have clarification questions or need advice. Um, so that person will be providing training to the committee and council as well, which will be very helpful. So um, it is mandatory training, but again, it's super helpful um, to come out and participate in that. Um, a conflict of interest, again, could be uh, a number of different things, but generally we're looking at the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act, which talks about pecuniary interest, specifically financial gain or loss. That's a big part of what a conflict could be. Um, but it, conflict could also be something that um, is in contravention of our code of conduct. Um, so we'll ensure to circulate that to the committee, but it talks more about, um, less about financial gain or loss and more just about conflicts related to, um, you know, friendships or family members or things like that that don't necessarily have a financial impact. Um, staff, really important, cannot give you advice on this. Um, you have to get your advice from our integrity commissioner. So if you do think that it's something that you need to get some clarification on, we can put you in touch that staff are not that sufficient need to um, advise. Um, again, uh, they can be direct or indirect. That's whether it's to you or to someone that uh, may pose a conflict if you vote on an item or discuss it. Um, you do have to disclose this when your chair is going to read this out at the beginning of the meeting. Um, if you have it in advance, it's helpful so the staff can report it. But even during a discussion, as we're working through something, if you suddenly realize the discussion has gone this way and now I, I should take part, just let your chair know, you know, hold on, I think I need to sit out and declare a conflict here and we'll make note of it in a minute. Um, and again, these are um, reported in general on our website, so we are legislated to be publicly available. So we do have a registry on our website. Okay, so again, that's why we need it in writing. Any other questions? Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Does, does anyone have any specific questions that they want to ask for anybody? I think some of it will just come with as we go through it, you know, things might come up, and, and if things do come up as we're going through through it at any point in time, we can ask, right? Okay. So then, if there are no questions, um, Kristen, can I get your read of the resolution? Or do you have another one? So can I start? Yeah. Yeah. So next, we'll just be reviewing a few sections of the Recreation Advisory Committee's terms of reference. Um, every committee has a terms of reference or it's sometimes referred to as a TOR. Uh, it's important to note that the committees are governed by their terms of reference and these terms of reference are approved and adopted by council. So tonight, uh, the key aspects that we'll be reviewing are the committee's role mandate, the purpose and subcommittees. So for the role and mandate, uh, part of the role and mandate of this committee is to serve in an advisory capacity to council. The committee will be advising council on issues that affect recreation, facilities, parks, uh, playing fields, playgrounds, programs, and the community center. Um, finally, part of the committee's mandate is to provide a forum for exchange of information and engagement with the community. This can be done through the delegation portion of the agenda as well as through engagement opportunities that that council has approved in the committee's goals and objectives. We'll talk about those a little bit later tonight. Uh, the committee's purpose is to advise council where applicable. Uh, it's to act as an advocate for recreation within the township, receiving the township's proposed user fees and charges bylaw, uh, reviewing practices and policies identified by staff and council making recommendations to improve the delivery of services to the public, uh, encouraging and assisting where necessary programs of recreation to meet the needs of the and interests of the community, actively engage the community on matters relating to recreation by promoting public awareness of township recreational facilities and discussing concerns raised by public and staff. Um, finally, as Courtney had mentioned during her presentation, uh, subcommittees play a really important role uh, within the committee. Um, 
they're important for moving forward committee goals and objectives. They're formed to complete a specific task and they report through the committee itself. Um, it's important to note that the maximum membership on subcommittees is two. This is because subcommittees cannot exceed the quorum. And are there any questions? Any other presentations? No, that's fine. All right, so then I'd like to see if you read that. Staff reporter REC 2023-001 regarding committee orientation be received for information. Okay, so did I get a mover? Okay, seconder, Penny. All in favor? Carry. Great. Okay, so now we are moving on to 8.2, the committee goals and objectives training. Okay, uh, this uh, purpose of this report is for information to provide the committee with a training session regarding the setting committee goals and objectives. Great. So the purpose of this presentation is just to go over the process for setting goals and objectives. So uh, at the beginning of each term, our advisory committees are to set a list of goals and objectives to be completed over the course of the term. These goals and objectives have to be approved and endorsed by council. Um, the purpose of the goals and objectives are to help the committee guide their work um, and then throughout the term, you may also have those objectives that are actually referred to the committee from council as well. Uh, anytime the committee wants to add a goal or objective, they have to create and approve a detailed proposal that's then sent to council for approval. Um, part of the uh, report for this, or part of the attachments for this report was a standard operating procedure, as well as a proposal form. Um, so this will kind of bring you through the process and uh, provide you an opportunity to create that. If you need assistance, um, the committee coordinator will be available to help with filling out that form. Um, in terms of implementing the goals and objectives, following the committee's uh, approval of their proposed goals and objectives, the report is brought to council by the committee coordinator. Um, once that has been approved, uh, one of two things will happen. If the goal and objective does not have a financial implication, the committee can then begin work on that objective immediately. If there is a financial implication, then um, the budget for that goal objective or the funding for that goal objective has to be approved through the budget process. And so work cannot begin on that goal objective until the funding has been approved through the budget process. Uh, in terms of reporting, as I previously mentioned, um, at the beginning of the term, there will be an initial report that's brought by the committee coordinator to council with the committee's proposed goals and objectives for their approval and enforcement. Um, following that, for the remainder of the term, two reports will be brought to council annually. One will be brought at the beginning of the term, where uh, the committee will have an opportunity to um, add additional goals and objectives for council's approval. And then a second report will be brought at the end of the year which will be an update to council on the progress of the committee's terms and or goals and objectives. In terms of reporting to the committee itself, a report will be brought to each committee meeting just to tell the progress on each of the objectives. And are there any questions on this process? Right. This report has the um, um, attached to it this proposal form. Yes. So, can you just explain to me a little bit of this form? If this one, if, if, if a member of this committee wanted to um, add our goals and objectives, is this something that would be filled out by an individual committee member, 
or is this something that as a community we can fill up together? No, so it can be filled out by an individual committee member, um, and then it can be brought for the committee's consideration with a committee memo. Um, something that you'll see when we do, that's something that you'll see when we do the next circulation um, of the agenda is I'll provide a committee memo to them. At some point, then the subcommittee may wish to work on one and bring it forward. Um, but for the initial ones, it can be from individuals. Okay. And these can be filled out at any time and committed to. Yep. The the right here. Yeah. And then, and then it can be moved for the next agenda. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, okay. So I think we want to read the resolution for this one. Perfect. Uh, staff report RUC 2023 002 regarding the 2022 2026 goals and objectives uh, committee training be received for information. Okay. Can I get a paper? Second there. <laughs> uh, and all in favor. Okay, next one is um, city goals and objectives update. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the purpose of this report is to review the completed 2021-2022 Recreation Advisory Committee's goals and objectives and to review the goals and objectives that will be carried forward for the 2022-2026 term. Uh, tonight's report is just for information. Committee members are asked to provide the committee coordinator with any proposed goals and objectives by May 2nd, 2023 for consideration by the committee at their May 16th, 2023 Recreation Advisory Committee meeting. Okay. Um, wanna go through these goals and objectives? And has that has everyone had a chance to look through this chart uh, since the agenda? Um, there are a bunch of projects that were completed in the last term, and then there are also um, some goals and objectives that carry forward for this term. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments about any of the ones specifically that are carrying forward? Do you, I'm sorry, Justine, do you, do you need any kind of um, direction from us at this point in time to keep these ones on the queue for goals and objectives? No, so we're now, this is just for information. It's just for information. Um, what we'll do is at the next committee meeting, um, we'll bring these ones on any additional ones back for the committee's consideration. And then we can look at approving those at there that time to then go to council for final approval and assessment. Okay, so we'll kind of put together these ones with any of the new ones and have kind of like a wholesome discussion with one the, the end result. Absolutely. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Is everyone comfortable with um, working on some objectives to bring to our next council meeting? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Great. Um, so do you need any other directions from us then? Or is it just a resolution? That staff report REC 2023-003 regarding uh, 2021-2022 committee goals and objectives review your seat for information. Okay, can I get a mover? Mary? Secondary? <laughs> okay, all in favor? It's carry. Okay, next one is 8.4 recreational recreation facility survey results. <laughs> so, <laughs> the purpose of this report is to review the results of the recreation facility survey for the committee's consideration when setting 2022 2026 committee goals and objectives. Tonight's report is just for information. The committee will see within the report some potential goals and objectives, ideas that have by, been identified by staff as part of this report. Okay. Um, does, does everyone have a chance to look through um, the survey feedback? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I think it was great. It was, it was cool to get through that survey. And there's a few things that definitely stand out. Uh, and I mean, June Williams group must be like <laughs> all about this pickleball because yeah. there's a lot of pickleball <laughs> comments. And you know what? I think that's great because that's a pretty large group that's growing and growing and you gotta maybe you know figure out a way to accommodate it a little bit more better in the gym and uh, 
you know, and if you look at the age, ages of the people in the township, a lot of them are playing pickleball. So, you know, it's that. and another thing I noticed too is, uh, and it might take a bit of time for the staff to maybe do some kind of a streamlined thing, but uh, I've heard of a lot of people say, boy, you know, it's a lot of red tape to rent anything here. And it's a lot of hoops to jump through and I got to find a security guard and I got to find this and find that. Maybe the township can work on like a all in one package where the township uses their own preferred security. And somebody calls and says, you know what? I don't have time to get this and get that and do all the legwork. I'll just pay whatever it costs. You know, you guys tell me the big dollar amount. You know, that'd be cool if there was just like the, the, the no red tape version, or if you want to save a few bucks and try and do it your own way <laughs> version, you know, because like some people just want that. List. Yeah. Yeah. They want that bottom line where they just make one call. And they're like, yeah, you know what? I called the township and it was $1,500 and that's an all in price. No surprises, you know. I think, that could be something that we could do as part of our goal. Yeah, yeah, it might be something just to make it easier. Because I think some residents say, you know, I would have rented the community center, but then I called and, you know, and I got scared about this and that. And I was really confused. And then you lost the rent church. So, you know, I think if they made it easier, less red tape and one call, one price, it was done. You know, obviously it's going to be more than, you know, say the Aberfoyle Fair did their own legwork and did all their extra stuff themselves, you know, to save some money. But, you know, yeah. it might be something to look into to help increase the rentals and maybe make it easier. Yeah. You know, say uh, the township has some packages where if you rented the hall and you wanted a tent rental, they already got the prices already there. And this is what it's going to cost, and you know, make one call and it's done. Um, one thing that I thought was really awesome was that we have this feedback now with the season. I don't know, maybe this season, I think it's not, this is pretty new. Not that new, it's a couple years old, but this engagement software that we have, we have a chance to. So the engage plus lunch um, website is through a software called Bang the Table. So Bang the Table is an engagement software um, used specifically for um, receiving feedback from the public on various uh, initiatives. Um, so it's a very cool program. There's a bunch of different tools that are available and uh, within it. So um, survey is one that we use pretty frequently. Um, there's another one, like the ideas tool. This one was used when we did uh, feedback for um, our young playground planners. Uh, that was also done by this committee. Um, and they're kind of uh, different environment tools are available. Some are more open to our workflows. Um, and so one of the things that you'll see uh, that was in the previous report is um, and engage the uh, subcommittee potentially. And so that committee would look at opportunities um, on the committee's behalf to engage the public in various um, uh, initiatives. Um, so for example, this recreation facility survey was something that came kind of from within the committee and then was recommended to council and the council approved that to the board. Um, so it's, it's a really cool tool for the subcommittees receiving that kind of feedback. Yeah, I mean, I, when I read through a lot of the comments that came from this survey, and there was quite a few respondents, I was surprised how many of them. Uh, to me, those are the things that I would look to help develop goals and objectives for the next year, which we don't find in the report. So it's a really cool tool. And it's um, even for council for budget, we get a survey to budget, and that really helps help us understand like the community's thinking and feeling. It's not the only way to engage with plus lunch, but definitely an added measure. So it's a pretty nice tool to share. Um is there any other comments or feedback? No? Okay. 
If I look at page 21, and I noticed that the um, the categories were flipped, so they have the question option, and I, I didn't understand, like I was reading, 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 and then I was, I was looking for target areas, and uh, normally you would look to the, uh, to the, to the blue, and I noticed that the color coding is flipped. Yeah, that's just um, an effect of when you're pulling the server to the program. Um, sometimes it pulls differently for some images than it does for others. Okay. The other um, issue that I just brought up, I thought about, it, it, it's something that we have to be cautious with when we use data like this, is that in a lot of the cases, um, for example, question 15, question 17, um, there were more of them if I go back, but we only have one respondent, question 13. Question 12, if you only have one respondent, it's not statistically significant. So that could be problematic if we rely on it solely, but it is still a good tool. Um, I think maybe one of the things we should consider is how can we get more people using it in the future? I'm sure if it's just sort of starting out, it'll, it'll start to grow more. Um, but that was one of the concerns I had with the statistical significance. You know, say uh, if you do another one, maybe a baseball one, and we canvas the baseball team, yeah. your target the target. baseball team to say, hey, you know, uh, we've got this survey about baseball. We want to make it amazing in Puslich. Tell us what we could do better. You know, yeah. Obviously, pickleball got right onto the survey because you know we've had a member of the rec committee who was on the pickleball group. To encourage the team to say, hey guys, you know, you want to see something happen, you got to go on the survey. So. I thought demographic too, though, that plays pickleball, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's I think, if I'm not mistaken, when we did that survey, did we, like in the actual facility, did we have something posted? Try and I believe we had a poster that was posted up. Yeah. So that's an idea too for looking for feedback on specific. Uh, Things to advertise it and market it in the areas where we're going to be wanting that feedback. Like, for instance, if we're looking at what kinds of features do we want in a new playground, if we then those would be the people who are going to be more inclined to fill out the survey. So that should be a QR code that they can just scan with their phone while they're sitting there watching their kids and they're playing on their phone. Does it have the ability to do that? We can try. That's, should put on social media. Yeah, I believe we also did a paid advertisement for this one, but I didn't see it. I, so that's, I, like, I had no idea about it. Yeah, I, I didn't either. And I like that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying. Yeah. That means so that's that. maybe something that we can work on at the community to how to eyes on. Yeah, like yeah. how to grow that that social networking, how to get more followers, how to get more, um, I don't know, <laughs> I am not, I am not up to speed on the social media language, but mm -hmm. <laughs> Twitter, I don't know if have Twitter, mm -hmm. that's what I think. But that's <laughs> where like a community board in the parks or something, yeah. you come in handy, right, where stuff could be posted. Yeah, because you're right, not everybody is using whatever digital media. There was a lot of like, you know, far out there wants, you know, a swimming pool, a splash pad, you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of cool things that sound really good to want to have, but on a uh, managing and maintenance side, it's very expensive for a township play cars to have. I mean, it'd be nice to have our own pool, splash pad, and yeah. all that fancy <laughs> stuff, but I mean, there isn't too many swimming pools that make any revenue. It's usually a big loss. So. Anyways, that's all feedback that we can use to uh, determine what, what our goals and objectives would be in the next, next four years. Um, any other questions on that? Okay. Yeah, the staff report REC 2023 004 regarding recreation facility survey results be received for information. Okay, I'm going to move her.
Vinny, second, and all in favor. Okay. Uh, conference opportunities. Uh, the purpose of this report is to provide the committee with information related to the opportunity to attend either the 2023 Pro Educational Forum or the Ontario Parks Association Annual Parks Education Forum. Um, we currently have one member who has expressed interest in attending uh, one day of the 2023 Pro Education Forum on behalf of the committee, and that is uh, the <laughs> Um, okay, so this, yeah, there's, um, we do have the budget for, for one member to attend for one day, am I, is that correct? Yes. Um, and there are a couple of conferences. Vinny, I know you were at a conference. Yeah, so Kim and I actually went to the, uh, the Ontario, the rec one, and it was really cool. You basically had a big conference room, and you could go around to all the different people that were there and people were like a Mike Fowler type of thing to go to uh, because it was companies that made playground equipment and garbage disposal and all kinds of fancy things you could get at your parks you know so for me it was cool to learn about all this stuff you know but I wouldn't really make the decisions you know they had all the different types of um, you know bases you could have on your playground and you know different things that were you know cool and up to date I don't know, they did some pretty cool question and answers. They talked about things that luckily we don't have to deal with yet, but we could deal with down the road, the uh, homeless encampments and our public parks, uh, you know, and how they deal with stuff like that in Toronto. Uh, we had some good uh, guest speakers. It was a pretty good, uh, you know, we had a lot of fun and it was, it was really cool. Good. So, but, it's more of a, I don't know if that's more of a rep committee <clears throat> member or more of a Mike Fowler should go to something like that show. You know, it's, um, it's good. Yeah. Be more on that level. This particular conference, uh, I was just looking at the sessions that they have and people that took a while there are some of them took a while. <laughs> so <laughs> those might be valuable to go to. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if it was the same. Was it the same conference that you were We were at the OPA, so Ontario Parks Association. Okay, because there were a couple of points that I thought was directly related to the committee. And um, one of the things was programs to engage diverse communities and how we can reach out to different varying uh, public interest groups, as well as needs to shifting equitable camp delivery models. Sorry, I should put on my other glasses maybe. Um, there were some program initiatives that looked like it wasn't just about equipment, but more so about how we can uh, build parks or use our parks to make them spaces that are more diverse and more usable for the whole community. And that's the area that I was attracted to attending. If uh, the committee decides that they want uh, to focus on the equipment, then I would agree with Vinny that it should be someone else to go. But um, in terms of uh, the direction of what I was looking for, I was looking for how can we use this to help and bring ideas back. And you and you're comfortable doing that? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you guys Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it would be just from the the um, sessions that they're offering, I think it would be valuable to have there's it looks like there's lots of great sessions there. So I think I it doesn't, I don't think there's any that deal with just equipment. It's all. Just, and when is this one coming up? It's coming up pretty quick. March 28th, 29th. Oh. This is just in Hamilton. Yeah, it's not. Fun. Yeah, I think it'd be valuable. And then hopefully you can maybe bring back to the committee some of the information that you want to get. So that we can all have to go Like everyone's okay with having Mary go. And then. Uh, in following year, just that someone else can be there. Everyone can take a turn if you want to do it that way. Um, 
So then if that's the case, we need to report it. So the staff report RAC 2023-005 regarding 2023 conference opportunities to receive more information and further that the recreation advisory committee on the following committee members preparing to cite us to one day of the pro education Okay, great. Can I get a mover for that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, uh, I think the last report is the alternate chair schedule for the term. Um, so we do not have a vice chair, is that right? Yes. So this is a, this is your life, not able to be here. That's you got to cancel that trip. When you book. <laughs> <laughs> so what does happen if you're not here? Then one of you would. Maybe it's tough stuff. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so the purpose of this report is to request that the committee pass a resolution that defines when committee members shall act in place of the chair uh, during an absence or vacancy uh, for the duration of the 2023 2026 committee term. So you'll see included in this report was a schedule that outlines uh, which month uh, if each person would act as chair. Um, and so, so by receiving this, then we'll put that in place. So I don't intend to miss meetings, but if I did have to, I, I wouldn't throw it on any of you like at the last minute. I would let you know in advance. So that is kind of prepared. But um, is everyone okay with the schedule? Does anyone have any questions, concerns? No? Can I get even with that resolution? Uh, staff report RAC 2023-006 regarding the alternate chair schedule and the event of the chair's absence or vacancy to receive for information and that the committee adopts the alternate chair schedule in the event of the chair's absence or vacancy as I wanted to be Okay, I got a move. I'll move. <laughs> and a second there. Mary, one a second. Okay, all in favor? Uh, okay, so that's all the reports, right? Yeah. So so now we will jump back to consent. And um, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find the right spot on my own agenda. So for consent, um, okay, if I'm saying this wrong, then, then stop me. But generally, we don't necessarily have to go through every consent item one by one. And I think this is correct. This is this is generally the consent items that are for information purposes. And if there's one report or multiple reports in there that anyone wants to pull out to discuss, then we can do that. And if not, then we can just receive them all for information all together. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So that being said, um, from this list of consent within the items today. Is there anything specific that anyone wanted to pull out to discuss? No? Uh, just had a quick question. So previously we had talked about sponsorship opportunities around the rink boards. Um, and we were gonna follow up with the people that are there, see if there's any more new people. Is there anything, any update on that? And then also the last meeting we had spoke about uh, Doing a bit of fundraising uh, to bring up uh, fundraise for some extra money for I think it was a lighting project. We're going to approach, or I think it was upgrade here. We're going to approach various groups. I'm just wondering if there was any update on if any donations were received uh, with that fundraising there. Yep. Yeah. So we have received uh, one donation. Um, and then uh, in terms of um, how we will be. Uh, like uh, so we're but, uh, promoting the donations received, uh, a policy is being developed for how people will be recognized. Um, so that's still being developed with finance. Um, and then regarding the ring board advertising, I think I'll have to turn that over to Sarah. Yes, so we did have quite a few of the current um, advertising um, companies renew for the fun, like for the year. Um, we've had a few new businesses come forward with some interest um, to rent, um, but overall it hasn't been um, something we've had a lot of interest in. So I wonder if we 
look after collecting money and who's paid and you know replace maintenance and stuff. I wonder if it's easier to hire a third party to go out and get uh, advertising and maybe turn over more revenue. Uh, you know that rate because I don't think it hasn't changed much. I think it's been the same five or six boards since I can remember. Um, Vinny, you're talking about hiring a uh, consult like a third party to sell the advertising. Uh, you know the canvas, the businesses, the township doesn't just going to call around and say, "Hey, you know, we should put your name on our board." Like there's companies that do that, and they, you know. You set you set an amount that you want, like the township sets an amount that they want out of it, and the advertising company goes and they add their little bit on. You know, we got a lot of empty spaces there. We could easily make some easy money. So, but how does it get put out there? Well, that's what they. Like I'm a business doing. owner, and I've never heard of this. Like I've never noticed it in Pioneer. I haven't noticed, you know, advertising. That's, that's the that yeah, the opportunity is there to do it. Well, is that something that we need to say here? So it's that putting something. You know what I mean? Together. Like I don't know that you necessarily need to go to a third party. And... Well, I think that if it's something that as a committee we definitely agree is something that important is important to generate that marketing revenue or the advertising revenue, then perhaps that's something that we put in as one of our goals and objectives is to increase the advertising as a board. And maybe even go as far as depending if, if that's an important thing, then maybe we develop a subcommittee to brainstorm ideas as to how to promote it, advertise it, get the word out there um, within our own committee before we, you know, and see how that goes each, the success of that, what the what the revenue is versus the potential cost of maintenance, all those things, and then kind of you know go from there before we. I mean, like to give you an example, uh, you go through the city of Guelph, and all those city bus stops have advertisements in them. Well, it's not the city of Guelph Transit that sells those advertisements. It's a totally separate company, and they maintain all the advertisements. They maintain the benches and signs all themselves, and that's all part of the package. If I wanted to get a bus stop advertisement, it's not done through the city of Guelph, but the city of Guelph collects the revenue, a certain portion of it, and the company maintains the sign. If somebody graffitis it, they replace it, you know, and it's all part of the package. So, and it's, you know, it's kind of like what the township did with the pets. You know, it's a lot of, you know, hoping that everybody's going to buy a dog tag for their dog. But, you know, if you hire a company that that's all they do for municipalities, it makes it a lot easier, less burden on the township staff to try and go after all the township residents and their dogs, you know, and you have DocuPet do it. And they do it electronically and the township gets their dog tag amount and DocuPet gives their perks away to all the residents that want to hopefully, you know, stand up and register their dogs. So. But is that even something that this committee has ever explored on their own? Is advertising? Like, I think what you're saying is maybe we, as a pool, see if we can do it ourselves first, see if there's even a, a need or a want out there prior to hiring a third party and investing in that. Because maybe, maybe the boards aren't built because no one really wants to advertise. Or you know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe we just need to first engage what's out there, put things into the plan here, put things on social media, see if there's um, a need for anyone that wants to invest in advertising or invest in it. Yeah, I don't know. That would be I mean, it just is, it sounds really good to, you know, let's all go and do it, but. Then the reality is like, well, you know, you're really busy and I'm busy and everybody else is super busy. Last thing we're going to want to do is walk around on our free time and try and find people that, you know, advertise on the boards of the ice rink. I know. think, um, Justine, sorry to put you on the spot again. Um, we do, we do. The 
township has a whole that has a budget and advertised. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to buy this, but I know we have about uh, 12 today. Yep. And like a, you should have, I think, an end 12 day have some kind of program where they can help us sort of target a specific objective if you don't advertise. And so if you know, advertise, if advertising, advertising is one of those things. Is that something, is that perhaps something that we can look at? Uh, we could look at that. So um, this will be brought in a report to the next committee meeting, but we can touch on it a little bit now. Um, so there is uh, uh, advertising budget for our recreation facilities. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, it's like plus three, four thousand dollars um and so uh last year the committee made a proposal um for it to be spent uh with 12 today um in general we have a communications uh an advertising communications media relations policy which outlines where we can advertise there is an ability to do external advertising however that does also require a proposal to council um so i think you have, have really um Said it well in terms of the committee looking at uh, this as a goal and objective and then looking at those opportunities for external advertisement uh, related to that budget um, as a way to move forward and then get a proposal to council with whatever direction uh, that policy comes to. Does that sound okay to you, Vinny? We've got a lot of goals and objectives. Yes, we don't have a lot of goals and objectives, but we've got strong team here. Um, do we need to make a note of that in the presentation or or that can just be uh, noted as yeah. part of discussion for the goals and objectives as well for the team? Um yeah, we don't have to specifically note it. There's no uh, direction coming out of it. So okay. Okay, so then in that case, um we're just gonna have a resolution to receive all the consent items together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Consent agenda item 7.1, 7.2 listed for the February 21st, 2023 Recreation Advisory Committee meeting be received for acquisition. Okay, we're gonna move that. Jimmy, seconder, Tiffany, all in favor? Okay, okay so We've been now done reports, so we are on to correspondence. Is that right? Yep. Um, we, do we have any correspondence items? There is no correspondence items. Okay. This would be so if there was a resolution coming from council to the committee, is this where can you just speak to what kind of items we would see generally in correspondence? Um, yeah, if there was a letter that was addressed like specifically to the committee, but it um, was in a delegation, you might see under correspondence. Um, other items that you might see under correspondence could be changes in legislation um, that the committee you know, might wish to comment on. Um, those are the kind of items you typically see here. Um, often you'll see uh, actually under consents uh, resolutions from council, just if it's kind of like um, that decision has been made on something that was uh, provided from the committee, the other comments will be those there. Um, other times they'll be in a Okay, great. Uh, and then announcement. So is this this will be the opportunity for any committee members to make the announcement? Yeah. Do any committee members have any announcements today? No? Okay. <laughs> um, no, it's, well, oh, sorry to interrupt. What, what kind of announcements would you have? <laughs> Like, um, I'm really happy. <laughs> 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 Sorry, there's a snowstorm coming. <laughs> they've, they've upgraded to a freezing rain morning. Oh. <laughs> so generally, um, I maybe you can help me yeah. with this. Maybe yeah. like I know in a council meeting, this would be where if we had an announcement for um, some kind of an event that was taking place through one of our through one of like through the recreation committee or if there's something can you think of example like for me? um the fall fair like you might say it's coming up um make notes because again who knows who's watching this and maybe they want to know um, the santa claus parade santa claus parade it's family day exactly kind of just uh, anything that you're aware of within your other uh, community groups and engagement um events 
Um, you know, we, we do um, different awards through the township too for volunteer of the year, things like that. We might make an announcement just to let everyone know who that person was and just celebrate them. So things like that. That's all. Yeah, very much. Thank you. Um, notice of motion. Uh, again, maybe again, people you are coordinating to the notice of motion might be what what the purpose of this portion of the agenda is. Yeah, so uh, notice of motion is uh, to provide notice of something to be discussed at the next meeting. Um, I think typically they can be related to um, like resolutions um, that require advance notice. Um, I'm not really sure what good example that one might look like for our committee. So um, let's. So it's not something that we've um, as part of our goals and objectives. It's unrelated to what we've been discussing so far. But let's say it's something that's important to you or community members you've been speaking to. You would put a notice of motion um, in writing to your secretary of your committee saying, just at the next meeting, um, I would like this notice of motion put on the agenda so everyone can see it. A notice of motion. Um, so let's say you made a notice of motion for this agenda. We see it on our agenda. It wouldn't be up for discussion. That's your notice that you're making a motion. The subsequent meeting after that, it would be on the table for discussion, so long as you could get a seconder. So in general, um, that's something that's used by council um, for items, I would say, the rec committee, um, for a lot of what we're dealing with, it could be appropriate to use that under new business. Um, if it's something that's still related to our general um, order of business and our mandate, um, I think it would have to be something very uh, specific if we were to do another solution, something very unrelated to what we're talking about. And notice of motion would be kind of going in against sometimes with new business. Is that right? If new business is generally to bring attention to some things to the committee that you know we may not have been aware of or talked about before, but isn't necessarily an action item. Is, is that correct? Yes. It's not something that you would want to give notice. Something that you could bring up today it may result in direction from the committee or it may not. Yeah. So I could maybe like say an example somebody ran up to me at the family day and said, hey, you know, we should do May 24th fireworks at the community center. It's like, oh, well, sounds good, but I can bring it up at the rec committee and see if they think that'd be something that'd be appropriate, you know? But I don't, obviously we're not gonna do it, but you know, as an example, so we, I guess that would be something. I would, know, something we've never ever done before. <laughs> I would say that in, for the most part, we're not gonna rely on notice of motion for our committee. Yeah. I would say for the most part, what we're talking about today, like at our meetings with all of the business, if there's a new item, um, if it resulted in something very significant um, or something we may want to do notice of motion, but again, it's just a procedural tool to make sure that proper notice is given to the committee and the public when you're bringing up something that's very new and we haven't discussed before. So I think in general, that that amount of notice, if we're talking about our committee quarterly, we're talking six months or more, more notice to the public. Generally, um, okay, so other than so we have no other reports, no other items, it's just the time for adjournment. New business, isn't it? Oh, yeah. New business. Sorry. Does anyone have any new business? Yes, go ahead. Let's put our Mike Fowler on the spot to give us an update on the. Uh, all the constructions that are happening around our uh, uh, community center and our soccer fields and our lights and bring us all up to snuff. It's been a few months. Oh, it'd be my pleasure, Vinny. <laughs> um, Just so we all know. So to all the new members, um, we are in the, in the progress of installing new uh, soccer lights at the back soccer field at the Puss Lynch Community Center. Uh, the project is about 60% complete. We are currently awaiting poles and fixtures for final installation. Uh, the latest update given was a projected completion date of around June. Again, um, some back orders and uh, supposedly a shortage of cement for the poles have put us back a bit. 
Uh, the other uh, major project for the PCC grounds is the actual implementation of the parks master plan, which will consist of the new playground, uh, tennis court rehabilitation, uh, walking paths and trails, a new uh, pedestrian type, um, we'll say patio that will be located between the horse paddock and baseball diamond and additional parking to complement the back soccer field. Along with this project is also the uh, rebuild and improvement of Borum Park playground, which will consist of new playground structure, all accessible, um, a new shade structure, and uh, complementary um, soft landscaping. And uh, so, yeah, the, the township was undergoing uh, quite, a, quite a significant improvement for our recreational lands. And um, that's all I have. But I'm sure next month I'll have another update to give. Thank you. Well, like you say, let's hopeful uh, that budgets don't go over and stuff gets done, you know, as timely as possible. Oh, one thing that Mike didn't mention is also the, um, sorry, Mike, to put you on the spot again, but um, the gym floor is being repainted as well to accommodate permanent pickleball lines. Is that correct? Yes, you're correct. I forgot. I, I don't know how I forgot about pickleball. Um, pickleball <laughs> will have new lines painted to establish two courts for the gym. Along with that, we will have a couple new lines added for our basketball court, which will include uh, the three point line, which currently does not exist. And with this work being completed, a uh, new coat of varnish will complete the, the gym, uh, we'll say renovation. How about badminton lines? I'm sure I could look into it, Benny, but you get enough lines in there, it'll look like a ball of string. Yeah. All right, perfect. That's good news. Yeah. Hey, well, if there's nothing else, then we are adjourned. All right. Okay. Um, what's my need for adjourned? Motion. Sorry, go ahead, Vinny. Motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. Is there a resolution? Uh, that the recreation advisory committee hereby adjourns to that 817 county. Moved by Vinny, seconded by Joanna. All in favor? Nice. And that's carried. Where's that? Right? Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Pizza, I don't know.